everybody. Welcome to part three of the Bodice Draft Along. I am super excited to be here with you guys today. I'm sorry I was a little bit late. Um, and just to be honest with you, between you and me, I was late because I had worked on my um, sleeve draft earlier in the week and I wanted to just quickly sew it in to show you how it would look and I sewed it in and I'm like what what's going on with my sleeve it has like too much fullness up here in the cap so I realized after thinking about it for a few minutes what I did and this is going to help you guys not make the same mistake I just made. But basically, remember when I was showing you the, um, the front and back, and then I was showing you the shoulder, one of the measurements that I had not gotten an accurate read on was my center front to, you know, the... The, the depth of my, I'm sorry, the depth of my shoulder from the tip of the shoulder down to the base of the armhole. That got a little screwed up. Hi, Janie. Hi, Judy. And hi, Diane. Welcome, guys. Um, I got a little bit of a late start because I was losing track of time trying to figure out why my sleeve got a little screwed up. So I was just saying that one thing that's really important when you start to draft your sleeve is you have to make sure you transfer adjustments that you might have made to your bodice to your pattern before you measure things. Um, I measured my sleeve um, armholes in my bodice, front and back bodice, but I forgot that I had picked up the shoulder three quarters of an inch. So that added, um, I'm sorry, that took away three quarters of an inch from the total length of my armhole. So when I drafted my sleeve, I actually put ease in there and then also I had the three quarters of an inch of ease um, on top of that because I forgot that I did that. Plus you can see if you look, my sleeve is a little bit, my shoulder is a little bit long. So we're gonna be making adjustments to this but that's gonna be part of the draft along after everybody um, sews their front and back, or I'm sorry, drafts their front and back and sleeve, we're gonna do some fitting with it. Um, Mary says, hi ladies, working on two pairs of jeans that will go into the closet for a while once I'm done because my, me and my ripper have been best friends through it all. <laughs> I love that. I'm best friends with my seam ripper as well. Um, Kathy says, it's reassuring that even though you're a professional, everything doesn't always turn out the first time. Oh my Lord, I am the queen of not turning out right the first time. Oops. Um, so basically, I'm kind of glad I'm doing this with you in real time because I'm, I'm trying to work like a step ahead of you so I can then go back and tell you what not to do if I screw something up. So that's what's happening here. But you can see, even though I, you know, I screwed it up, but it does hang pretty straight. So if you look at it, this is, it's loose because remember I have that whole extra three quarters of an inch running down my entire sleeve actually. Um, but basically it still hangs right. And you know, we're just going to need to make some adjustments and, you know, having a muslin to fit, um, you know, that's where I work in my muslin. So I can already tell you from looking at my muslin, I'm going to be shortening the shoulder and I may, depending on the style of the shirt that I want to make, I may lower the base of my armhole a little bit because it's a very snug fit. Um, oh, hello, Le Lean. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but welcome from Belgium. Um, 
Rena, welcome. Watching while working again, so listening and taking notes. I have my front I have my front done and we'll work on the back. Um, oh, Kathy reposted the reassur reassur reassured that um, even though you're professional, it doesn't come out the first time. Um, listen, ladies, I just want you to know that I'm like a little sewer girl, just like you guys, and you know, I know a lot, but I don't know everything, and um, you know, so I'm just going to work through this with you, but the cool thing is, it's going to give us the opportunity to you know, do some really good fitting together, um, and you'll be able to be working on something that's yours. So a pattern that was designed for you, for your body. So, you know, taking measurements as carefully as you can still can end up with needing to fine tune the fit. That's why when I teach fitting classes, I always skip the step of measuring garments and start with muslins that we can start working with immediately because, you know, developing a pattern that fits takes some time and, you know, in a class that's designed to get you in and out of a pattern fitting process as fast as possible, I start with the muslin. But here we're starting from the ground up and I can't even get, begin to tell you how much fun I'm having because I love nerding out with patterns. So just again, take a look at my sleeve. Um, you know, I think even though I did screw it up, it looks okay. I'm gonna turn around here, show you the back. Okay, so my back waist, my back. Okay, so that's how I'm looking. I'm gonna take this off. I have a tank top underneath, so don't be alarmed. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the, the measurements that you need for the um, sleeve draft. Oop. Okay. Let me just stop and say hello to Patricia from Missouri, welcome. Hi Andrea from California, welcome. All right, I'm just gonna stick this on my ditto form so you guys can look at it some more while we're working if you'd like. my ditto form, you know, the sleeves, you know, even on the ditto form, the sleeve is, is hanging relatively straight, which I'm happy about. So we'll be working on this some more later, but I'm going to leave this on here so I don't lose it. Um, all right, so let's get started with one thing I want to show you. I'm going to start working with this book in addition to the Armstrong book. It's uh, Gillian Holman's Pattern Cutting Made Easy. And there's a different way to draft in this. Let me just pull my cle cleavage up here. Hold on. Okay, that's better. Um, so I'm going to be using this book as well. So if you'd like to check this book out, I have activated my Amazon affiliate program. And so I do have a link for this book right in the description of this video if you'd like to check it out. Um, after we fit our bodices, I'm going to be um, maybe trying some of the things in here because in addition to showing how to draft a basic set, it also gives you some design ideas which I think are very cool. So maybe we'll try some things in here. But anyway, this is a very cool book. Next up, um, I want to show you how to measure or figure out your sleeve. And what I need to do is find my little elastic. I lost my little elastic, so I am going to, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna cut a new piece of elastic. All right, so I'm just gonna cut a small piece of elastic and I'm gonna use it to show you where your bicep is. Hi, Amelia, welcome. And this is 
important because we need to measure the bicep and we're also going to measure the length of our sleeve cap for the sleeve draft. So I'm going to show you these measurements and then I'm going to show you how to draft the back bodice. That's what we are doing today. So basically I'm just going to tie this little piece of elastic into a circle. Nothing fancy. I hope it's not going to be too tight. Um, let's see here. Okay, so I'm just going to stick this on to my arm, up at my bicep, like this. And you want to get this right up into, into the top of your arm and your bicep, and you want it to be straight or parallel to, or I'm sorry, perpendicular to your vertical grain line. So see, that's not good. I need to have it straight like this. So I'm going to stick this on. All right, so I think that that's okay. So what we need to find out here is, let me just lift it a little bit. It needs to be a little bit higher. Let's see. All right, I think kind of like this will be okay. Okay, so this is our bicep. It's right up there into the base of my arm and actually if you look at where the elastic is hitting the inside of your arm it should be about two inches below your armpit because that's where we measure the top of our side seam so I'm just gonna try to get that to agree I think that's gonna be good and again I'm just gonna pull that down a little bit you want it to be p perpendicular all right so I'm gonna go with that Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to feel my, okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm feeling for my tip of my shoulder, I'm just going to make a dot where that is, oops, no, it's about, oh, actually, I don't have to, I don't have to do that, I can actually, I have these little dots, these little stickers, aren't these fun? So I can actually take a little sticker, let me just get a little red one, and I'm going to put this where I feel my tip of my shoulder. So again, we're looking for, you know, where the top of the armhole is, and I'm going to put it right there. Can you see it? No, oh no, you can't even see it on the thing. All right, so I'm just trying to find a way where I can show you where the tip of my shoulder is because that's going to be important because what we're going to do is we're going to measure our entire arm and then we're going to measure the cap. So I'm going to actually cut a second piece of this elastic because measuring your arm length can be a little challenging because it's awkward if you're doing it by yourself. So I'm going to make a second um, strip of elastic here. And I'm just going to put that down here like this. So I've got two pieces of elastic, one above my elbow and one below my elbow like this. So what I'm going to do to get the full length of my sleeve, that's going to be the first measurement we need, I'm going to snake this underneath here. And then, actually, you know what I could do? I'm just trying to think of the easiest thing. I might look a little silly. Someone emailed me and told me I looked silly and interesting. So <laughs> I'm like, I love to look silly. So I'm going to take a piece of scotch tape. And I think, so that whole thing of trying to find a thing to mark it. I think that's about where my thing is. So I'm just going to put a piece of tape there to hold it. Okay, so if you look, that's approximately the tip of my shoulder. Then, you know, I'm just going to lay that smoothly down. And then I'm also going to stick the other end of my tape measure through this second elastic here. And what that's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to measure without stressing and trying to hold everything. 
So you can see, when you measure your the full length of your arm, I'm just going to smooth this down, smooth it down, smooth it down, smooth it down, and I'm just going to wrap it around my pinky down here. You want to be able to measure from the tip of your shoulder to your bicep, over your elbow, and then down your forearm. Okay, that's the full length of your sleeve. And you want to be able to do that so you can see you're getting it at the tip of the shoulder, bicep, armhole, I mean, uh, elbow, and wrist. So now I can just very easily look and see where my sleeve ends at my wrist. And I'm going to go with right at my wrist. So my sleeve is 25 and a half inches. So that's the first measurement you're going to need for the sleeve draft is the, t the full measurement. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to grab it and I'm going to see what that is. And that measurement was six and a half inches. So from the tip of my shoulder down to my bicep line was six and a half inches. So you're going to need to record full length. And I'm just going to make notes for myself here on my handout. I'm going to flip to the first page of my draft here. And I'm just going to jot down over in the margin sleeve, um, full length, 25 and one half. Then I'm going to draw, uh, draw, I'm going to mark down bicep is, um, my bicep, I'm sorry, not my bicep, my cap height was six and a half inches. And I'm happy to report this to you that when I carefully measured in front of a mirror, I also got six and a half inches. So that kind of made me happy. Hi, Maggie R. I'm happy you're catching me live as well. Welcome, everybody. Um, so we're doing the measurements for the sleeve draft that we'll do next week. So I showed you how to do the full measurement by using two elastics and sticking the measuring tape through there to help hold it. So from the tip of your shoulder down to your wrist, going over your elbow with it bent. Then your cap height from the tip of the shoulder down to the bicep, for me it's six and a half inches. Then we need the actual bicep measurement. So if you have your, you know, if you have your tape there, that's very handy. Um, I'm just gonna go around and measure above my elastic here, like this. I'm just going to feel for where, I'm just sort of looking, so I'm getting 13 and a half inches if I pull it snug. Actually, you know, I'm going to go with 14 inches, okay, so with it like this, and you can see there really isn't any ease in the tape, that's exactly 14 inches. I'm going to go with 14 inches for my bicep measurement. So write that down, 14. And then the other thing you're going to have to measure is your armhole. So let me show you how to do that. And of course, you've probably already, um, you know, some of you have told me that you're drafting along with me and you already have your front bodice is finished so you can get your front armhole measurement. After you draft your back, you can get your back armhole measurement as well. So let me just show you here. I'm going to switch my view. Let's see. Okay. I have, my, I have my microphone right here so I can, hopefully you can hear me. Now, here are my pieces that I cut out. This is the back right here. What we want to measure is from the base of the armhole at the side seam all the way up to the top where the shoulder seam and the armhole meet. You do not want to measure your seam allowance. And honestly, if you have your draft handy and you want to measure that before you 
um, you know, before you add your seam allowances or just measure it from your actual draft instead of, you know, using your pattern that you cut your pieces out with. Either way, we are measuring this line right here, the stitching line. Okay, and I'm going to use a clear grid ruler. If you guys don't have one of these, I highly recommend getting one. And, you know, maybe I should have put an Amazon link for that as well. But see what this ruler does. It makes it very easy to measure curves. So what I'm going to do here is I'm physically going to put... I don't want this in my way. Hold on. Let's see if I can keep my microphone close, but also not in the shot. That's better. Okay. So I'm going to physically measure from right here. So I'm going to put the end of my ruler right there and then I'm going to bend it so it sits right along my stitching line like this. And so you can see my back armhole is 10 inches long. Okay, so I'm just going to make a note of that on my thing here. So my back armhole back arm hole is 10 inches. And then the front armhole, I'm going to measure it the same way with my front. Okay, so I am going to just do the exact same thing from shoulder, curve it right down to the side seam. And I am getting 10 and a quarter. Okay, so do you see how I'm, I'm measuring that and I'm using the stitching line? Okay, so to my front is ten and a quarter. So that's all the measurements you're going to need to draft your sleeve. So it's a little bit less measurement intensive than the front and back bodice. Um, and actually, it's a pretty easy thing to draft. So let's, let's look at these pattern pieces. And let's fix the boo-boo that I left on here. Oh, see, I just did it again. Now, if you change your bodice, so let me show you what I did. And this is why my sleeve was a little bit too wide. Um, I mean, I had way too much ease in my cap because, see right here? I actually took out of the length of my armhole, front and back, I took out 3 eighths of an inch. And notice I'm measuring um, half an inch away from the raw edge of the fabric, so that gives me the actual damage I did to the pattern. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fix that, and then I'm going to adjust my measurements. So I'm just going to measure down. Now, it doesn't... Okay, so this might be confusing. The seam allowance is there. I'm going to pretend the seam allowance is not there because we need the same seam allowance whether you know, after we make an adjustment or not. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to measure down 3 eighths of an inch, which puts me right here. And then I'm going to connect that to my original neckline edge like this. Okay. And then I'm just going to redraw my seam allowance, that half inch seam allowance, like this. So you can see what I did was I dropped my armhole down. Let me just make this a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing here. So you can see I'm going to get rid of all of this. That's not going to be there anymore because I cut it off of my pattern. So actually I could just snip this right off. So see, I'm getting rid of, this is what I got rid of when I lowered the sleeve, uh, lowered the shoulder at the tip of the shoulder. So now if I measure it, it's going to be three-eighths of an inch smaller. So my front is really going to be nine, and it was ten and three-eighths, so now it's just going to be, oh, I'm sorry, just ten. So in the, no, a quarter, I'm sorry, nine, ten. So it was ten and a quarter, so now it's going to be nine 
and seven eighths. So the new front length of my arm hole in the front is nine and seven eighths. And then I'm just gonna quickly do the same thing in the back so I don't forget. So again, in the back, let's get this so you can see it. It's upside down, but basically I'm gonna measure three eighths of an inch here. I'm gonna redraw my line so it's correct. Oops. Okay, let me show you. Right side up here. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that off. And then I'm just gonna redraw my seam allowance. Let me do that too. Okay, so instead of 10, it's gonna be um, nine and five eighths because I cut off three eighths off of the top. All right, so that fixes my pattern and it also fixes the measurements that I need for my sleeve draft. So just to re recap here, you need to measure the full length of your sleeve from the tip of your shoulder across the back of your elbow to your wrist. And if you missed the beginning of the video, just watch how I put the elastics and then you could sneak snake the tape measure through the elastics and get that measurement pretty easily. Then you're gonna need from the tip of your shoulder down to your bicep, that's gonna be your cap height, your sleeve cap height. You're gonna need your bicep measurement and then you're gonna need your front and back armhole measurements. So my suggestion to you is make sure you try your bodice and see if you need to pick up your shoulder or change something here or under here before you measure those things so then your sleeve comes out accurate. All right, so that's what I got screwed up on on my sleeve. I'm gonna redo my sleeve now that I have the proper measurements and I'll be wearing my hopefully perfect sleeve on Friday next week. So that concludes the portion of sleeve drafting information. Now we're going to work on drafting the back bodice. And the back bodice is um, easier than the front bodice. And actually, I think I lost step one, step two, step three, step four. Okay, there's the last. Okay, so I've got my back bodice information here. Um, actually, I should have, I lost my stapler, and to be honest with you, I think I lost some pages. Make sure they're not in here. Oh, this is, I need this piece. All right, and then I need this piece and this piece. All right, so I'm sorry, I'm just organizing my handout, which I should have stapled. All right, so this is all the front bodice. We do not need the front. Then we need this. Step two, step three, step four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine. All right, we are ready. So what you need if you're following along with me live is you need your handout or follow my video, and then you need your measurement chart that you filled out to draft the back. So I'm gonna move all of this stuff out of the way here that we don't need. And I'm going to show you what I have prepared here. Move this out of the way. All right, let's look. Let's make it nice and big so you can see what I'm doing. So we are going to use the side seam and the armhole depth of the front to, to do the back.
All right, so what we're going to do here is I drew in yellow my front draft. So this is my front draft. I just traced a copy of it and I put it right here because what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to sort of see how things are lining up as we work. Um, you'll notice my front is on a little bit of an angle. Okay, so when I traced my front, I'm sorry, just want to make sure I have enough paper to work with here. I think that's going to be enough. All right, that's probably good. Okay, so when I traced my front, I tipped it. So notice my center front is not on the on the dotted grid of my paper because I wanted my side seam to be on the grid of my paper. That's going to allow me to just build right off of my front side seam to create the back draft. So I'm going to slide it over so I have room to work. I'll just put some some uh, pattern weights over here so it stays nice and flat. Okay. So if you're following along with me, oh, let me just stop and si say hi to Ernestine from South Africa. Welcome. I just want you guys to know that I appreciate each and every one of you for following along with me because if I didn't have, you know, people who wanted to sew or draft or design or fit with me, I wouldn't have a YouTube channel. So I really appreciate all of you. Okay, so our first step is we are going to make this, let me just change my, I want to make sure you can really see what I'm doing here. All right, I think that's better. Okay, so we're going to draw the framework for our back draft. Now, if you remember, in the front, the front width of the pattern was de determined by the bust arc, so from center front to the side seam. So to continue that measurement, the back arc um, is how we're going to define the width of the draft in the beginning. But having said that, I also want you to notice that if you have a waist measurement that's bigger than your back arc, your side seam may not angle in like you're used to seeing it, might angle out. And actually, just to show you what that looks like, you can see here my back draft. So if I would, were to put my ruler, you know, sort of parallel with the grain, you can see that my, my side seam pulls out to the side a little bit because I do not have a defined waist. I have a chubby tummy area or just chubby waist. And I'm actually, I think, more trim, you know, across my back up higher. So, um, well, actually, I wouldn't have a, <laughs> I wouldn't have a belly in the back. I'm sorry. But my back measurement is just wider than my front measurement. My back waist measurement is wider than it is up at my back arc. And so that's what can happen here. So I just want anyone who might have this happen where you don't either have it tip in. Now it could look like this too. It could come in at an angle. Okay, so if that's what your measurements do, that's great. You might have a straight one, which will be great, or you might flare out like I do, and that will be great too. Um, hi, Jenny Space. You're glad to join from Doha? Welcome from Doha. I don't know where Doha is, but thank you for joining me. That's wonderful. Okay, so now that I cleared up the issues with the measurements, we're going to start drafting, and I am going to use my L ruler, which I carefully put somewhere where I would not lose it, and I thought I just left it right here. Can you see my L ruler? Oh, I found it right here. There's a lot of stuff going on. Oops. Here's my L ruler. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. The first step is to um, mark our back arc, our full length, and our cross our shoulder in the back. That's exactly what we did in the front, except we used the bust arc 
full length and across the shoulder. So I'm going to look at my measurement measurement chart here, and I'm going to look for my 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 um, back arc first. So my back arc is ten and a quarter. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to measure from the tip or the very edge of my front side seam. And I'll use a darker color here. You will use red. So see right here, that's where I'm going to start measuring. I'm going to just measure across 10 and a quarter inches. So 10 and a quarter inches is going to put me right here. I'm just going to put a dot. Oops, you can't see what I'm doing. I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so ten and a quarter is right here where this dot is. So now I'm going to use the grid. So I'm using this line, gridded line on my paper to go straight, and I'm going to draw myself a line to ten and a quarter. That measurement has a half an inch of ease in it. Then I'm going to use my L ruler and I am going to, let's do it like this. So I'm going to put my L ruler on top of my red line so it's parallel to it, right along the edge at ten and a quarter. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to go up for my full length. My full length for the back is twenty-one and a quarter. So I am going to go all the way up. 21 and a quarter. Put this right there. Okay, and then I'm going to flip my my L ruler around and I'm going to go across the back shoulder. Now, across my back shoulder, I am eight and three quarters of an inch. So again, I'm going to line up the long straight edge of my L ruler with my red line. And I'm going to go across to eight and three quarters. Puts me right there. Okay, so I've got my framework for my back draft. Um, oh. Oh, wait a minute. Let me ask my daughter. She was a Geography B champion in high school. So I'm going to ask her, Anna, what, what, I'm going to tell you the capital of the country and you tell me the country. Why are we trying 20 questions? Doha. Uh, Qatar? Yeah, Qatar. Q A T. Cutter. Yeah, Cutter. Cutter. Anna knew the answer to that Jenny space. What's happening? She, I have someone from Doha oh, watching, that's very cool. and I didn't know where it was from. Well, I'm giving Anna a gold star, and thank you so much for joining me. My daughter is so smart. I love her. Yeah, you have to have kids. She's going back to work now. All right. <laughs> okay. And I wouldn't know how to pronounce Cutter either, based on the spelling. So I'm super happy Anna was here with me today. All right. So, um, here's what we're going to do now. Remember, after we um, make this framework, we have to draw some. <laughs> yes, she is right. Oh, it's so cool. All right. We have to make some guidelines now. So, basically, the first guideline I'm going to need is we're going to square a line down from the tip of the across shoulder down this way and that's going to give us the guideline to find our shoulder slope. So I'm going to use yellow to do my guidelines so they're less noticeable. Um, so I'm going to square off like this and this line doesn't really have any specific measurement. It just needs to be probably three or four inches long you know, something like that. Okay, and that's going to be where we're going to measure from our center back over here to our shoulder slope in a, in a minute. Um, the next thing we want to get is, we did our full length in the back, 
And if you remember, the full length was from the shoulder, neckline, all the way down to the waist in the back. Well, we want to know where our back neckline sits. That's the next, the next thing. So basically, my center back measurement is 20. So I am going to just measure up to 20 here. I'm not going to draw a line, but I'm going to, um, that's 18. And now I'm going to measure two more inches to get to 20. So that would be 20. I'm going to slide this down a little bit here. So now I'm going to square out a guideline from my full length line out about four inches for the base of the neckline. Okay, so that's going to be the base of my neckline um, guideline. So now I've got my two guidelines. Let's see what the next step is going to be. Now you notice I'm referring to my my PDF companion handout because um, I want to make sure I'm doing each step correctly and I just want to say I kind of want to give you permission to not feel the need to memorize each step because that's why there are drafting books, that's why there are fitting books. I know how to do a lot of fitting things and if I haven't done it in a year I might have to look it up. So I'm following along with this just to make sure I get everything right um, and I don't have to worry about remembering all the steps. So the next step is the slope of the shoulder, and this is where, where, where we're going to use this short little vertical guideline. We are going to measure from our center back up to here, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my ruler over here to the line until it hits the measurement I need. And the measurement I need for the back is, where is my shoulder slope, is 21. Okay, now I know that that measurement is not correct, because remember I just showed you how I fixed my the slope of my shoulder on my actual pattern piece, but I'm just going to go with it for, the, for this um, demonstration. Um, you know, I recommend maybe taking your body measurements three times and then taking the average of your answers because each time you measure yourself, and depending on what time of day you measure yourself, you may be a little bit bigger or smaller, puffier, less bloated, whatever. So um, there's that, but I am going to use my 21 for my slope of my shoulder. So keeping the corner of my ruler here, I'm just going to rotate this until I get to 21, like this. So my 21 is right here. So again, I'm just going to draw myself a very, you know, yellow line. It's actually orange now because it's bleeding with the red, but that's all right. 21. So this is the slope of shoulder. This is the base of neckline. Let's just label those things so you can see them. All right, so our next step is we are going to, um, we're gonna do our shoulder in the back off of the top of this line next. Now we're including a half inch shoulder dart in the measurement. So if I look at my shoulder length measurement, my shoulder length was five and a half. I think I'm going to change that to five based on how my bodice is fitting. I'm, I think I made it a half an inch too long. But again, I'm just going to keep with these measurements just so I don't screw anything up. So if the shoulder is, whatever your shoulder measurement is, you are going to measure, let me just get this a little bit bigger here so you can see. You're going to take your ruler and you're going to measure five and a half inches from right here, this tip where that meets right there, to the top line across the shoulder line, like this. So there's my five and a half for my shoulder. Then what I'm going to do, and I'll do it in a different color. 
put in, I don't know, we'll just be use this black. This is going to be the shoulder dart. It's going to be extended out here to a half an inch. Okay. So you've got the, the red is the length of your shoulder. The black is the adding the dart intake for the shoulder dart. All right. So we've got that taken care of. Now, this angle does not have to be squared at 90 degrees. Okay. This is whatever the angle is, but we want to create a square guideline for the neckline. So we are going to use something that I can square off of the shoulder. This is going to be the guideline to start drawing the back neckline like this. Okay, so this little angle right here is 90 degrees right in there. All right, so that takes care of our shoulder. It takes care of the framework for our back neckline. see what the next step is. The next step is the dart placement. So I'm just going to use, for dart placement, that's basically where the princess seam is. I'm going to use three and three quarters, just like I did in the front. So I'm going to measure from here three and three quarters. I'm just going to make a little dart placement line right there, dart placement, okay. Then the next step is we are going to, um, I want to dash in my, um, and I'm going to use my L ruler for this, I want to dash in the um, armhole level across the back just to have that because we want our back waist start to kind of be even or at the level of our base of our armhole. So I am going to do this. I'm just going to dash a line in here. Okay, so that's basically going to, that's basically our armhole level in the back. Okay, but it's also going to be where we're going to put the tip of the dart in the back as well. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my dart. Now remember, or not remember, um, I'm going to use an inch and a half for my back dart intake. This can be customizable depending on how much shaping you need. Okay. So um, maybe start with an, an inch and a half if you're, you know, size 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. If you're above a size 22, maybe give yourself an inch and three quarters. If you're um, in the smaller sizes, maybe an inch and a quarter. But again, this can be very customizable. Once we have it in your muslin, we can play with it. But basically, I'm going to measure an inch and a half away from my dart placement line. And then I'm going to find the center, which is right here. So once I find the center of my dart, I'm going to use my L ruler to basically draw straight up to my, um, the base of my armhole line, which is right here. So that's going to be where I'm going to put the tip of my dart for now. So to get the dart, all we have to do is connect those. So I'll use the red for that. my regular little ruler. Like this. So there's my dart. All right, so now we've got the dart taken care of. And you can see, I think, you can start to see the shape of the back draft coming into view here. All right, so our next step is we are going to do the back waist. So this is where we're going to look at our back waist measurement. My back waist measurement is an inch and three eighths. I mean, what am I saying? 10 and three eighths inches. So I'm going to measure, remember from here to here was, this was 
Yeah, so you can see. This was three and a half inches from here to here, right? Three and a half. So if I, so that's gonna be seven, no, six, wait a minute, let me just do it this way. Um, okay, so we have 10.38 minus 3.5 is um, 6.88. So it's really um, six and seven eighths is really what it is. Um, so I'm going to measure six and seven eighths over here, and I want you to notice what happens. I love the fact that I am not in the um, boilerplate shape for a back bodice, and here's where I vary. So I'm going to measure six and seven eighths, and that's going to put me right here. So you can see, here's my side seam. Here's where I end up over here. So now I'm going to connect this. And this, my side seam measures 10 and a quarter. So I'm going to swing my ruler over here and make sure it measures 10 and a quarter to here. So there is my side seam for my um, back. And it overlaps um, the front. So one thing you can do is you can say to yourself, gee, I'm a pretty straight person in the back. I don't have a defined waist. Like this is not tapering down to something that's small. It's tapering down to something that's bigger. So I could say to myself, I'm going to make my back dart much smaller to have this swing back in. Does that make sense? But to know that, I want to try it and see how it hangs on me first. So I'm going to leave it like this, but just know you can make this smaller so then, then this will move in a little bit, okay? So that's a way that we can move that back in if we want to later. But for now, that's my measurement, so that's what it's going to be with a half, one and a half inch dart. So you'll notice in the handout, it's actually angling up towards the side seam. So just know this shape right in here, that could be anything. It could look like this, or it could look like this, okay? All right, so the next thing we're going to do is do our, um, our define our shoulder dart. So I'm going to drag this down a little bit. All right, we can just work on this part right here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to find the center of my shoulder and I'm going to include the dart intake in that measurement. So let's measure that. That measures six inches total. So three inches would be the center. So I'm just going to make a little guideline from the center to the tip of my dart. And I'm just going to make it a dashed line like that. Okay, then I'm going to measure three inches down along that line, and that's going to actually become the center of my dart. So three inches is right here, so I'm going to go right up to there. Okay, and I'm going to extend that line a quarter inch. And the reason why I'm extending it a quarter inch is because we're going to extend the dart legs a quarter inch too, because if we were just to create a shoulder dart here on an angle and then sew it, it would end up dipping down the straight um, shoulder seam. So by adding that this quarter inch, it's going to allow us to create the dart and still have a straight shoulder seam. So after we do that, I'm going to measure um, a quarter inch on either side, because remember this is a half an inch dart and then I'm going to draw it in like this okay so there's our dart and then I'm going to you know make sure these are a quarter inch above because I'm going to connect that to there and this to here okay so that would be our completed dart. Now, I think I showed you if you fold this dart up, 
and cut across, you'll get your exact line you need. Um, but that's the draft for the dart. Then what I'm going to do, the next step is we're going to do upper back measurement. So I'm going to look back at my chart here. And my upper back, so this goes with across the upper chest. Remember we used the upper chest or high bust measurement to determine where the armhole was going to sit. We're going to do the same thing across the back to determine where that back armhole sits. So mine is, um, in the back, is eight and a half inches. And that's including, I included a half an inch ease in that measurement. So I am going to basically to position that the um, across back, I'm going to measure from center back down here all the way up to the neckline and I'm going to divide that into quarters and then I'm going to come down one quarter and that's where I'm going to put this line. So I know that this is 20 inches. My full length was 20 inches. So I'm going to measure five inches down from there. That puts me right here. So then I'm going to just draw across a guideline that is eight and a half inches. So it goes to eight and a half inches and then it's going to be, a, you want to make a little bit of a, uh, a vertical guideline to help draft your sleeve. Now, one other interesting thing that happened when I drafted my front and back armhole, and I want to show it to you before I draw it in here. Okay, so look how shallow my back armhole is. It's, it's got very little base of back armhole. And now let's look at the front armhole. Okay, if I put these together, I'm gonna just put them together so you can see here. So see the shape, it's, I've got a pretty long base of my front armhole and almost no base in the back armhole. Well, if you look at the side of me, I don't know if you can tell, but my back, my side seam is over here all of this is because of my large bust. Okay, so if you have a large bust um, and you don't have a lot of fullness on your back, you could end up with a shape like this where you have very little curve here. Now it could be that you still have curve here. You know, if you have fullness along your sides, like under your arms, on your back, I don't want to say back fat because that's ugh. But my point is if you have fullness there, this curve is going to be deeper. Does that make sense? Because you would have gotten that measurement um, and it would have, you know, come out that way. But I don't have, you know, I'm pretty um, to the rib cage back there, probably from all my crazy swinging of my arms when I hike in the woods, <laughs> you know, I'm hustling. So I have a very shallow curve here. So I want to point out to you that my curve looks very shallow. Yours may be more, more curved or have more flat here based on what your body shape is. So I'm just pointing some things out that are a little bit abnormal or not the norm or standard. I think I like that name boilerplate, not boilerplate. I have a very shallow back armhole. Okay, so here's the goal. We need to and I'm going to be brave. I'm going to do it with my red Sharpie. Um, we need to go from here. We need to come down. So we hit this. And we need to curve into this. Something like that. Okay, that's how you create your back armhole. And I have here, I dug out of my box of rulers a short French curve. Let me just see if I can find it. Of course, my, my short French curve is clear, so it's hard to see. A 
Oh, here it is. Yeah, I found it. All right, so this is a very form clear French curve, and this is the shorter version that's used for um, creating things like armhole curves. Oh, okay, Mary. Thank you for coming, and I hope you have a lovely weekend. Mary's leaving. Okay, so see what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this curve and I'm going to try to get it to agree with all my touch points, the base of my armhole, my guideline, and here. And then I'm just going to draw that in like this. Okay, so there is our back armhole. So if you have the shorter very form curve, it's very helpful. Again, I probably should have put this an Amazon link for this. Um, I will add an Amazon link to the shorter very form uh, curve rulers. But now I have my armhole. We're really almost done. The only other thing we have to do is the neckline. So really, we're essentially we're done. Um, so basically, to get our neckline, I am just going to draw a very short see if I gave a measurement in here. A little quarter inch guideline right in the center where, where the two lines um, connect. So see how there's like a little quarter there? And then basically I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna create a curve. And you can see this curve is not gonna go into the curve. So this curve is too fat. So I'm gonna use my longer curve. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do here is I am just going to try to touch. Yeah, that's not even going to do it really. So I'm going to I'm going to just do this. Okay. So I'm not using my French curve for this. There's my back neckline. All right. All right. So that would be the back draft. All right, so really and truly, if you have, I'll just make it so you can see the whole thing. All right, there you go. That's the back draft. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments about drafting this, um, please post them below. I have to say that a, a few people have emailed me their pictures. Someone actually posted their. Um, progress in my J Stern Designs Fit Sew Embroider Facebook group. It's so much fun to interact with you guys. I know I have a lot of people following me during this process because I've gotten a lot of downloads for both the measurement chart and the PDF companion. Thank you so much for purchasing that because it really does help me, you know, pay for stuff that I need that I put right back into my YouTube channel. But, um, I also love to see what you're doing, so please either reach out via email to show me your progress or join my Facebook group, J Stern Designs Fit Sew Embroider, and you can post your pictures and questions in there. Um, next week I will have a final um, bodice with, arm, with my sleeves done correctly now that I fixed the length of my armhole um, on my actual pattern and I will be showing you how to draft your sleeve next week. So if anybody has questions about, you know, maybe adjusting their shoulder, if you're wondering if your shoulder seam is too long or if your slope of your shoulder is not correct and you want to check that with me before we start drafting the sleeve or before you me take your measurements for your sleeve, please let me know. Um, and of course, if you're following along and you are falling behind because you're just not working on it right now, you can always check in with me and ask me these things. So I really, really enjoy hearing from you and um, answering any questions you may have. So I really appreciate that. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, I'm actually kind of excited. I am going to be getting together with Carol from Ditto Form on Saturday night because she's traveling through Connecticut. And... Um, you know, we're going to hang out and, um, I don't know, I just love talking with her, so I'm super excited about that. And, um, yeah, so I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I will see you for part two of my pants fitting 
series I started on Fit Tip Tuesday. Um, if you missed it, the title of the video was Never Scoop the Crotch Curve, question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, check that out and then join me this this week for part two of my pants fitting series concerning the crotch curve and all things related to that. And then I will see you Friday next week for part four of the bodice. Okay, Jenny Space, bye. Thank you all the way from Doha. And anyone else, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I put links to part one and part two of this series right in the description of the video so you can get that very easily. And um, I will see you again very, very soon. Have a nice weekend.